Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Language of Leadership podcast. I'm your host, Chuck Marting, and today we have an important topic to discuss. As a leader, I can't find time to improve my leadership learning. How many times have you heard that from leaders? I heard that a lot from people at the last conference when we were talking about some leadership topics and how they're so stressed for time, trying to find time for themselves. You know, many leaders struggle with finding the time to invest in their own growth and development amidst their busy schedules and their responsibilities. So in today's episode, we'll explore practical strategies to overcome this challenge and to make time for leadership learning. Our focus today is going to be revolving around three key points that I want to make with you that can help you as a leader create the space, the opportunity for your own growth. So let's dive into the first bullet point, and that is practice calendar blocking to make time. It's no secret that a leader's calendar can become quickly filled up. I know I experience it myself. It gets filled up with meetings, appointments, and other commitments. However, it's crucial to prioritize your self-improvement by setting aside dedicated time for leadership learning. Calendar blocking is an effective technique where you proactively allocate specific time slots for your own growth. So treat this time as non-negotiable. You have to guard against interruptions and rescheduling. So let me share some examples from leaders you may know who they themselves practice calendar blocking. Believe it or not, our first one, Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin was one of the founding fathers of the United States and was known for his metic meticulous approach to time management. I'm sure some of you may have used a Franklin Day Planner. Well, Benjamin Franklin used a system of calendar blocking called the Rattle to help plan his daily activities. He divided each day into blocks of time and he assigned specific tasks and activities to each one of those blocks. This allowed him to effectively manage his time and prioritize his personal growth and his learning. The next one is Dwight D. Eisenhower. He was the 34th president of the United States and a former military general, and he faced significant time management challenges to maintain control over his schedule and to allocate time for personal growth. President Eisenhower developed a system known as the Eisenhower Matrix, or the urgent important matrix. This method involved categorizing tasks behind their urgency and their importance and allowing President Eisenhower to focus on high priority activities while making time for his own development. How about Bill Gates? Well, Bill Gates is known for his commitment to continuous learning, of course, and also personal growth. So to ensure he had time for reading and learning, Bill Gates was known to extensively use calendar blocking. He allocated specific time slots on his calendar and dedicated it to reading and reflecting on various subjects, allowing him to stay up to date and also to expand on his knowledge. We also have Elon Musk. Now, Elon Musk, of course, is the CEO of SpaceX and Tesla. He's widely recognized for his ambitious projects and demanding work schedule. Now, despite his busy agenda, Elon Musk emphasizes the importance of personal growth and learning. He has been known um, to incorporate calendar blocking as a way to allocate time for his self-reflection and his strategic thinking. So by blocking off specific time slots, Elon Musk ensures he has the necessary space for critical decision-making and personal development. These examples illustrate how leaders throughout our history have recognized the importance of calendar blocking to prioritize their own growth and their mental well-being. By implementing similar strategies, leaders can effectively manage their time and create space for continuous learning and self-improvement. Now, our second bullet is scheduling meetings with your team to include an open door meeting or even using Zoom for this. This was a really cool idea that I learned about, and I wanted to share that with you. You know, in today's virtual work environment, it's important to leverage our technology to foster open communication and also accessibility. So by scheduling regular open door meetings and using platforms like Zoom, leaders can create virtual spaces where team members can drop in and have their leaders undivided attention. 
you can do this by setting up certain times that you're available on Zoom where your team can come in during those open times and know that you're there in the room. And then you can close the room to anybody else until you're done with that individual and taking that time with them. It's a pretty cool idea. Now, this not only encourages a sense of belonging and a psych psychological safety, uh, but it also allows leaders to address concerns, offer guidance, and they can actively engage with their team members. So these open door meetings can be structured or they can be informal. It just depends on what it is that you're wanting to do. But you can provide an avenue for both work-related discussions and also personal interactions. What I really like about the possibilities of an open door or a Zoom meeting is allowing your team members to just come to you, knowing that your time is to be open for them to come as needed. You have attention and you have their you have to share with you what is on their mind. So this is a really cool idea. And one I hope that I can see possibilities and I hope you can too, but you have to be willing to put it into practice and try it. Hey, are you a business leader or a supervisor striving to reach your full potential and take your organization to the next level? As a professional leadership coach, I can help you achieve your goals. My tailored coaching approach is designed to address your specific needs and help you succeed in today's fast paced business world. Whether you need to improve team communication, streamline processes, or develop a strategic vision for your organization, I'm here to help. With my coaching, you can expect to develop a deeper understanding of your leadership style and how to leverage it for maximum impact, gain clarity on your goals and priorities, and create a roadmap to achieve them. You're going to build the confidence and courage to take bold action and make difficult decisions. Learn proven strategies for managing stress, staying focused, and maintaining peak performance and receiving support, encouragement, and accountability to keep you on track and moving forward. Contact me today at chuck at learningthelanguageofleadership.com. That's chuck at learningthelanguageofleadership.com for a free 90-minute call to learn how coaching can help you achieve your business, leadership, and personal goals. Let's work together to unlock your full potential and take your organization to new heights. Practice and try it. So other people that have been doing this kind of approach, Jeff Bezos. We know Jeff Bezos is the Amazon founder, and he's also the former CEO of, of Amazon. But he implemented a similar approach with his customer obsession meetings at Amazon. Now, these meetings involved inviting random Amazon customers to join internal meetings and then share their experience and their feedback directly with Jeff Bezos and his leadership team. The virtual format allowed his customers to participate remotely, but it also engaged directly with his customers. So Bezos encouraged his team to think from their customer's perspective and to identify areas of improvement and foster a customer-centric culture within that organization. We also have uh, Mark Benoff. Of, he's the CEO of Salesforce. Now, Mark is known for his emphasis on employee well-being and engagement. And he implemented a program called Office Hours, where any employee, regardless of their position, could take and book a 30-minute meeting with him to discuss ideas, seek advice, or even provide feedback. Now, these meetings were initially started in person and they later extended to virtual formats. And they have become a valuable resource for employees to engage with their leaders and to contribute to the company's success. But it also fosters a culture of accessibility, empowerment, and continuous improvement. These real life demonstrations show how leaders can leverage an open door meeting and also include virtual online formats to encourage their teams and create a productive resource. But by providing opportunities for open dialogue, feedback, and engagement, you as a leader are nurturing a culture of collaboration, trust, and innovation within your own organization. So let's explore our third bullet point. Our third bullet point is finding a who to help in the delegation of your tasks. You know, as leaders, it's essential to recognize that delegation is not just about 
offloading tasks. It's about strategic distribution of responsibilities. But by identifying capable individuals within your team and delegating tasks to them, you're not only empowering your team members, but you're also freeing up valuable time for yourself. So delegation allows you as a leader to focus on higher level responsibilities, including investing in your own development. And it's in crucial, it's crucial to match the right tasks with the right people on your team to be able to provide clear instruction and to maintain open lines of communication to ensure the successful delegation of those tasks. Now, there are several examples that I can share with you of leaders who have delegated and use and found those who's to help them initiate these plans. The first one I want to talk to you about is Steve Jobs. Now, we all know that Steve Jobs was the co-founder of Apple, but he's also known as a very visionary leadership individual. And he was relentless in his pursuit and in innovation. We all know that. We've seen the movies, we've seen the reports, but however, he recognized the importance of designation to focus on his core strengths. So he found a powerful who, who and that who is Tim Cook, who eventually became the CEO of Apple. Now, Steve Jobs entrusted Tim Cook with managing the operational aspects of the company and allowing Steve Jobs to concentrate on product design and strategic direction and his own personal growth, the things that he felt that he really needed to be able to have time to grow in. And that delegation freed him up to explore new ideas and technologies, which ultimately contributed to Apple's success. You know, there's another example that's uh, Richard Bronson. Richard Bronson is the founder of the Virgin Group, and he's a renowned entrepreneur, and he's also a business magnet, okay? He is known for his ability to delegate and empower his teams. Richard Branson found powerful who's in his own organizations, and he placed those that trust in those leaders, leaders such as, as Will Whitehorn, who served as president of Virgin Galactic. And you know, by Richard Branson delegating key responsibilities to trusted individuals, it freed him up so that his time for strategic decision-making, pursuing uh, new ventures, and investing in his own personal development were available to him to do. His approach contributed to the growth and the diversification of Virgin Group. So these real leadership stories can highlight how finding powerful individuals to delegate tasks can free up your leadership time and allow you to concentrate on your own learning, growth, and effective time management. But by leveraging these strengths of others and empowering them to take ownership, you as a leader will be able to expand your capabilities and make a lasting impact. Now, the book, Who Not How?, is a book that's written by Dan Sullivan and Dr. Benjamin Hardy, and it provides valuable insights to leaders on the importance of finding the right people to delegate tasks and responsibilities to in both your prof professional and personal life. Now, the book emphasizes that success is not solely dependent on individual effort, but rather on individual right who to find the right who to help achieve those desired outcomes. You know, one of the key aspects or ideas in this book is that leaders should focus less on how to accomplish tasks themselves and instead focus on finding the right person or finding that who, who can do those tasks. And those tasks are then completed more efficiently and effectively by doing this. So you as a leader can free up your time and energy to concentrate on high impact activities personal growth, and self-care. So the concept of who and not how encourages you as a leader to shift your mindset from being the sole doer to being an effective orchestrator and a manager of talent. And it emphasizes in the book the importance of leveraging those skills and expertise of others to achieve better results. And, you know, by finding the right people, you as a leader can tap into a collective pool of knowledge and experience 
and those skills that surpass individual capabilities. You know, the book highlights the significance of delegation as a leadership skill. It's really important. And it's something that even I've struggled at with in the very beginning of my leadership, even going to my mastermind, trying to figure out how to delegate tasks. It's one of the hardest things for a leader to do is giving up what we feel is control because you kind of get that feeling of, you know, nobody else can do it but me. Somebody else is going to screw this up. It's just easier for me to do it than try to explain it and have somebody else do it. Look, I've been there. I know. But we have to have that trust. We have to take that step as a leader to allow other people to lead, to allow them to grow and allow them to bring their talents to the table and to help with our success within that business. Leaders can encourage and you need to identify tasks and responsibilities that can be effectively delegated to others on your team. This is going to allow you to focus on your unique talents and strengths in your areas of expertise. This approach not only empowers you as a team leader, but it also enables you as a leader to create a more balanced and sustainable lifestyle that's going to help ensure that you have time for your own self-care and your family and your own personal development. So who not how emphasizes the importance of building strong relationships. And it also helps in developing those networks. So by cultivating relationships with talented individuals and forming partnerships, you can create a supportive system that enables you as a leader to achieve your goals while also providing opportunities for members of your team to grow and contribute. So Who Not How offers a a pretty cool perspective for leaders, and it helps remind us as leaders of the power of finding the right people to delegate tasks and responsibilities to. You need to be able to embrace this mindset and use it to free up your time as a leader so that you can gain support from capable individuals and also create opportunities for your own self-care and personal growth, both in leadership roles and your personal life. It's vital. Well, we've explored three practical strategies for you as a leader to help find time for your own leadership learning. And that's by calendar blocking, having open door meetings, and effective delegation. But how can you implement these strategies in your own leadership journey? It's a pretty good question. So here are a few takeaways for you. First, you're going to need to set aside dedicated time on your calendar for leadership learning. And you're going to have to treat this time as a priority to protect it from other distractions. Second, you're going to have to establish a regular open door meeting with your team to utilize tools like Zoom to help create an environment where your team members feel comfortable in approaching you and looking for your guidance and support, knowing that you're there. And finally, you're going to have to identify tasks that can be effectively delegated to capable individuals within your team to help empower them to take ownership and at the same time helping them to free up your time for your own personal growth and development. So as we come to the end of this episode, I want to have I want to have explored the challenges leaders face in finding time for their own growth and learning. You know, we discussed practical strategies such as, you know, the calendar blocking, the open door meetings, and also effective delegation that can help you as a leader create the space that you need to invest in yourself. But remember, you are the driving force behind your team's success. By prioritizing your own growth and development, you're not only enhancing your leadership skills, but you're also inspiring growth and development. You're also enhancing the skills and leadership of all those around you. And it's through that continuous learning and self-improvement that you create a culture of excellence and innovation. So we need to embrace the power of who, not how, and seek out the right individuals who can support you in delegating tasks to free up your time and allow you to thrive. And by doing that, you're going to create opportunities not only for for yourself, but also for your team members to grow and contribute to reach their full potential. You know, thank you for joining us on this journey of leadership. And I need to ask you to remember to make time for your own learning and growth. 
It's not a luxury. It's a necessity. Invest in yourself and find your who's and unlock the door to extraordinary leadership. This is going to conclude today's episode of the Language of Leadership podcast, and I hope you found it valuable and insightful. And if you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review the podcast. I truly appreciate your support and ask for your help in spreading the word about the Language of Leadership. Remember, stay inspired, keep growing, and continue leading with purpose. So until next time, remember that great leaders are those who never stop learning. Take care. Oh, my God.